Hey there, my name is David and I'll be your Linode developer advocate for this video. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can set up your own invoicing system on Linode using a Docker solution called Invoice Ninja. According to their website, Invoice Ninja is the leading small business platform to invoice, accept payments, track expenses, and time tasks. It goes on to say that designed for freelancers and small to medium sized businesses, Invoice Ninja is a suite of apps to help you get paid. If you're interested in more information about Invoice Ninja, you can check out their website and GitHub repositories for more information. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, be sure to head down to the description where you'll find a link that will give you $100 in free credit to check out Linode for 60 days. And once we've got our account set up and ready to go, the first thing of course we wanna do is get logged in. Now, once we've done that, we can head over to the Create Linode button and go ahead and click it. Now, we could use the options on the Distributions tab and manually install all of our dependencies, but let's save some time and click on the Marketplace tab. Then we're gonna click in the Search for an App Name text box and type in Docker. Then we'll click the Docker option that appears below our search. Under the Docker Setup and Advanced options, you could, and probably should, should create a sudo user and disable SSH for root for a bit of extra security. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're not gonna go through that process. What we wanna do next is actually scroll down to the select an image option, and I'm going to select Debian 11. Next, we'll want to select a region, and I like to choose something that's close to me just to reduce latency whenever possible. To make sure that we've got enough resources for our setup, I'm going to select the dedicated four gig option. But if you feel that that's going to be too much for your needs at this time, you can switch over to the shared CPU tab and select the two gig option, and that should be just fine. Under the Linode label, you can give your Linode a name and add tags if you'd like to do that. And next, we're going to enter a root password, and you can add SSH keys for your Linode if you'd like to for security and login purposes. Now, we don't need a VLAN for this setup, but I absolutely advise setting up backups uh, so that you've got some sort of peace of mind in case anything goes wrong. And I always like to have a dedicated IP address, especially when they're free. Next, we can click the Create Linode button at the bottom of the screen and give the system a few minutes to spin up our new setup. While this is going on, we can head over to our domain registrar and make sure that the domain we want to use for our setup up is pointed to Linode's name servers. Be sure to change your DNS settings to point to ns1 through ns5.linode.com and give those settings about a day or so to propagate. Next, we're gonna head over to the domains tab on our Linode dashboard, and we're going to create a new entry using the domain that we just pointed to Linode's name servers. So click the create domain button at the top right and then enter the domain name and your email address. The next step here is then to change the insert default records for one of my Linodes and then below that choose the Linode that we just created. Hopefully at this point the system will have had enough time to bring up your Linode so we can SSH into it and start deploying Invoice Ninja. At this point you'll want to open your favorite terminal emulator and type in or copy and paste the SSH root at your IP shown on your Linode dashboard. Because this is the first time we're logging into this server via SSH, you'll be asked if you're sure that you want to connect. You can go ahead and type in yes and then hit enter. And then you'll be asked for your root password. So go ahead and enter that and press enter. And now you're logged into your server and we can start deploying. Now we're going to run a few different commands to download, edit, and deploy the resources we need for this project. First, we're going to download the resources we need with this git command, which is git clone https github.com slash invoice ninja slash dockerfiles.git. That will download the files into a folder called docker files. Next, we need to change into that directory with the command cd docker files. And if we run the ls command, we can see the files in the directory. Now we're just gonna focus on two of those files. The first will be the env file, and then we'll take a look at the docker-compose.yml file after that. Before we do either of those things though, we need to generate an application key for one of the variables in the env file that the application needs in order to run. To do that, we're going to run the following command, which is docker run dash dash rm dash it, and then invoice ninja slash invoice ninja php artisan key generate show. Basically, that will just download the resources we need to generate a key for our env file. Once that has been completed, it will automatically remove itself, and that's what that dash dash rm is for. Once you've run that command, you'll see a list of resources being downloaded and extracted. And once it's done, 
done, you'll get an app key that looks like this. You'll want to copy and paste that uh, somewhere like a notepad or something. Uh, so we'll have that ready for later on. Next, we're going to edit the ENV file so that we can set the necessary environmental variables for our containers. And to do that, you can just type in nano ENV and then press enter. You should then see the contents of that ENV file and you can use the cursor arrow on your keyboard to get to the lines that we need to edit. The first thing we're going to do is change the app underscore URL to be the URL or the domain name uh, that you plan on using. And be sure to start that URL with HTTPS. And of course, this is the domain name that we set up over on our registrar as well as our Linode dashboard earlier. Next, arrow down to the line that says, insert your generated key here, delete the insert your generated key here and replace it with the app key that we generated a moment ago and copied and pasted into a notepad. Now, while testing this application, you can leave the app underscore debug line set to true, but you will see a notice in the dashboard until you turn that off by setting the variable to false and redeploying your container. You'll also wanna be sure to change the password on the db underscore password line to something other than Ninja, but for the sake of demonstration here, I'm not going to change that. Below that, we'll want to set the in or in underscore user email and in underscore password to the credentials that you'll want to use for at least your first login. If you scroll down a bit farther, you'll see the mail options section. Now you'll want to change those settings to your preferred mail method. Uh, chances are that you'll want to change log to SMTP and then fill out the rest of your SMTP settings below that. Something to keep in mind with Linode is that you will need to submit a ticket with Linode to have them unblock the SMTP ports that you need. Otherwise, your emails won't be sent. And, and I know this is kind of frustrating, but they've done this, uh, they've got this in place to help prevent spammers from using their servers for nefarious purposes. You want to change the root password to a random string of characters, and you want to change the my underscore SQL underscore password to whatever the db underscore password you set was earlier. Again, for the sake of demonstration, I'm not going to change any of these passwords though. And that's it for the env file. So now we can press control O and hit Y and then hit control X to save and exit the file. Next, we need to edit the docker compose.yml file. So type in nano docker compose YML. The only thing that you really need to change here is the port number under the server service from 80 to something else. Now I've chosen 87, although in the end, it's not really going to matter because we're going to use 80 once we're setting up our domain and SSL in our reverse proxy. Setting this to 87 right now is just to avoid ports on this Linode from conflicting with other ports on other containers on the same Linode. And that's it for the Docker Compose. So again, we can press Control O and then press Y and then Control X to save and exit the file. Now, here's something that uh, I missed several times. Before we actually bring up the containers, that we need for our setup, we need to change some of the permissions for the files and folders to avoid any deployment issues. And we're going to run two different commands here. The first one is changing the permissions to 755, which is read and execute access for everyone. And this is a very normal setting to have on hosting like this. The next is changing the ownership of the Docker slash app folder and all of its subfolders. So the first command we're going to run is chmod 755, docker slash app slash public. And then the next command we're going to run is sudo chown dash capital R, that's for recursive, that's for all of the subfolders. Um, so it's gonna be sudo chown dash capital R, 1500 colon 1500, and then docker slash app. And that's going to give uh, the correct ownership of the files to the system so that it can create files and folders as it needs to, uh, to get the application set up appropriately. At this point, we should be set to go with all of the changes we need so that we can now uh, start deploying our initial docker containers. Now we can type docker dash compose up dash D to start the process of downloading and deploying our invoice ninja containers. And after a few moments, you'll see that the containers are up and running. Now, before we go any further, uh, we're going to install Portainer so that we can have a nice graphical user interface to manage things moving forward. So in our command line, we're going to run the Docker command to deploy Portainer with the command line listed on their website. Once that is up and running, we can go over to our Linode's IP address in our browser and tack on port 9443. You'll be asked to create an account, and I suggest changing the default admin username to something else, and then enter your password twice, click the button, and then you'll get logged in. Once you've logged in, you can click the environments link on the left side of the page and then click local. 
you'll want to enter your Linode's IP address and click the update button. And this is just to set that variable to make things easier later on. Now we can click on the home link at the top and then click basically anywhere in the middle of the page to see that we've got some containers up and running. What we want to do next though is head over to the networks link and see what networks have been created. Specifically, we want to make sure that there's a network called dockerfiles underscore invoice ninja. This is the network that was created when we deployed the invoice ninja docker compose file. You can verify which containers are on that network by simply clicking docker files underscore invoice ninja, and you should see all of the appropriate containers already in there. Next, we can click stacks and create a new stack by clicking add stack near the top right. And what we're gonna do here is install a reverse proxy called Nginx Proxy Manager to handle the routing of our traffic as well as our SSL certificates. So next we're going to give our stack a name. I'm going to call it NPM. Uh, whatever you name yours, be sure to make everything in the container name, lowercase or portainer will yell at you a little bit. Now you can uh, copy and paste the Docker Compose as shown from the Nginx Proxy Manager website. And this is going to pull the necessary resources for Nginx Proxy Manager and bring up the container. It's going to use ports 80 and 443 for traffic and routing purposes and port 81 as the port for the Nginx Proxy Manager dashboard. You can if you wanted to change the volume mapping if you wanted, but the current location in the Docker Compose should be just fine. Go ahead and click on the deploy button and give the system a few minutes to bring up the NPM container. You should now be able to click the port 81 link on the Nginx Proxy manager line and you'll be taken to the login screen for nginx proxy manager the default credentials for nginx proxy manager are admin at example.com and change me once you've logged in with those credentials you will be prompted to change the default credentials to something other than the default credentials for security purposes once you're done with that you can head over to the ssl certificates tab along the top of the page and then click the add ssl certificate button near the top right of the page then click Let's Encrypt. Enter your domain name and press Enter on your keyboard. Then check the box agreeing to the terms of service and click Save. After a few moments, the page should reload and you should see a new SSL entry on that page. Now you can click on the Hosts tab and then click Proxy Hosts and then click Add a Proxy Host. Now you're gonna enter the domain name that you wanna use and press enter on your keyboard. You can leave the scheme as HTTP and the forward host name slash IP can be found back over in Portainer. You're gonna be looking for the Docker files underscore server underscore one. It may be a little bit different on your setup, but that's the general gist of what we're looking for but it should be the one with the port 87 listed under the published ports column. Of course, that may be different if you used something other than port 87 for your setup. Now, just to the left of the ports, you're gonna find an IP address that probably starts with 172. Copy that IP address and paste it into the forward hostname slash IP in Nginx Proxy Manager, and you'll enter port 80 for the port number. Be sure to check the boxes for cache assets, WebSocket support, and block common exploits. Then click the SSL tab across the top of the pop-up window, and in the SSL certificate dropdown, select the SSL that we generated just a few moments ago. Then you're going to check the four boxes below that to make sure that the server forces us to use the SSL and then click save. The page should refresh and you should see a new entry on the proxy host page uh, with the domain name listed there. Click that domain name and you should be taken to the domain name and the login page for Invoice Ninja should pop up. Now enter the email and password that you set in the ENV file earlier, and you should get logged in. Now, once you're logged in, you'll be asked to enter some user data about your business and that sort of thing. And once you've done that, you're ready to start creating clients and invoices. Now, you may notice a red square in the top left of the screen letting you know that debug mode is on. We talked about that earlier in this video. When you're ready to actually go live with your setup, you can go back to your terminal window, edit the env file like we did before, and then run the command docker compose restart. Once the containers are restarted and back up and running, you should be able to then log into your Invoice Ninja and start invoicing your clients. If editing the env file via command line doesn't remove the red notification box in Invoice Ninja, you can go over to Portain and change the app in server containers app underscore debug settings from true to false and redeploy the containers to fix the issue that way. 
So look, I know that this was a bit of a process to get set up, but that's why I wanted to make this video. I went through a bunch of the headache getting this all sorted so that you wouldn't have to. If you'd like to check out Linode for yourself, be sure to head down to the description where you'll find a link that will give you $100 in free credit to check out Linode for 60 days. And if you found this video helpful, do us a favor and give the video a like and maybe leave a comment letting us know what you'd like to see videos on next. But with that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.